Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Good Saturday morning to you all. Hope you guys are doing well out there this morning and having a wonderful start to your day and a great beginning to your new weekend out there so far. We have a lot to talk about in regards to severe weather in this video. That's all we're going to talk about. We're going to do things a little bit different than I typically do on my channel, and I'm going to separate my content, my, my videos, because I think this needs its own video, and then the updated information on the major pattern shift that's going to bring a lot of uh, I think winter weather chances and well below average temperatures as we enter the new year. We're going to separate both of these. So in this, just severe weather. And unfortunately, we have upgraded another category as far as their confidence level for severe weather for today. So we got a lot to speak on with this. So if you guys have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. And if anybody has anything that I can pray about or pray over please put it in the comments below and i'm telling you ahead of time we need to pray for our folks in the deep south not trying to freak anybody out but this is one of your classic um severe weather setups especially for the winter and we're going to have a risk of strong tornadoes today across the deep south so we need to pray for these people and uh, we are certainly praying for you folks i know i said a prayer for you guys this morning we'll continue to pray for you throughout the day so let's definitely be thinking about these folks down here today so let's do our part and let's speak on this so this is the latest per the storm prediction center they updated this a couple hours ago and unfortunately with their update they upgraded it to a moderate risk so if you live in this red area right here this does include meridian jackson hattiesburg macomb alexandria uh, vicksburg all the way back here to i mean it actually goes into Texas a little bit, into extreme eastern Texas. You have a level four out of five, what we call moderate risk. It only goes up one more category, which is a high risk, which would show in the pink. I don't think we're going to get a high risk out of this, but we definitely have a moderate risk for a pretty large area. Enhanced risk in the orange. Remember when we made an update last night, that's all we had was the enhanced risk. Now that is actually expanded it's gotten larger gotten larger shreveport included into this um, almost all the way to birmingham but technically not including birmingham tuscaloosa down the mobile all the way down to baton rouge does not include new orleans you guys are in the slight risk does include lake charles shreveport all the way up to a very small section of southeastern arkansas does include greenwood uh, Mississippi, uh, Greenville, Mississippi. And then if we expand this out a little bit more, slight risk does include just south of Memphis, all the way up into the southern counties of Tennessee. Goes all the way back over to like Rome, Georgia. Uh, level two out of five risk, slight risk includes Montgomery, all the way down to Pensacola, Destin, New Orleans, and uh, all the way back to like Tyler, Texas, Texarkana. All the way up to just south of uh, Little Rock, but you guys have that marginal risk. So what is driving this? Let's zoom back into this, and let's go to the tornado outlook. They have increased this, unfortunately. So if you live in the red in the red area right here, you have a 15% risk of a tornado within 25 miles in any, any given location. Also, you see the black dashes going in between the yellow. And the red area, you also run a 10% risk of a strong tornado within 25 miles in the given location. That's an EF2 or higher. If you live in the yellow area, you have a 10% risk of a tornado and also that 10% risk of a strong tornado. So you ask, what's the difference between the yellow and the red? Well, the red, you have a 15% risk of a tornado. The yellow, you have a 10% risk of a tornado. And in the entire yellow and red area, you also not add it on to the other numbers I just said, but it's its own thing. You also have a 10% risk of a strong tornado, which is considered an EF2 or higher. So this is increased. So risk of a strong tornado for, I mean, Tuscaloosa, Mobile, we'll mention all of them again, Meridian, Columbus, Greenwood, uh, Greenville, Jackson, Macomb, Hattiesburg, Vicksburg, all the way over to Alexandria, Monroe, Louisiana, um, Baton Rouge, I think I already said it, Lake Charles, Lufkin, Texas, Shreveport, almost all the way up to El Dorado, uh, Arkansas. This is a big deal, guys. If you live in the Brown area, which goes all the way up to the southern counties of Tennessee, all the way down to the Gulf Coast line. If you live in that Brown area, Florence, Huntsville, Montgomery, Pensacola, New Orleans, you know, many other areas almost all the way up to memphis that is a five percent risk of a tornado within 25 miles in the given location green area two percent risk 
zoom back in it. Let's do it again. This is the wind outlook, guys. This has increased also. Now you have a risk of significant wind. So if you live in the red area, this is a good example of how the hatched risk doesn't always include the highest risk areas, if that makes sense. So in the red area, you have a 30% chance of winds exceeding 55 to 60 miles per hour. That includes just west of Birmingham, does include Tuscaloosa. All the way down to Monroeville, Alabama. I got family that live in this area of Alabama, and unfortunately, they are there right now, uh, you know, visiting because of Christmas and stuff like that. So, this is definitely an, a personal kind of deal for me with family down in Southwest Alabama and the Panhandle of Florida right now. But Meridian, uh, Columbus, Greenwood, Greenville, Hattiesburg, Jackson, Macomb. Uh, I think I said Vicksburg already. Maybe not Monroe. And all those in Alexandria and just the entire heart of Louisiana. You have Shreveport all the way up to Luf over to Lufkin, uh, Texas, Henderson. Uh, Henderson, And, uh, yeah, you guys have that 30% chance of winds exceeding 55 to 60 miles per hour. But if you live in this hatched risk area, so you see this black outline region right here. If you live in that area, not only do you have the 30% chance of winds exceeding that 55 to 60 mile per hour mark, you also have a 10% risk of winds exceeding like 70 to 75 miles per hour. That's considered significant winds per the National Weather Service. So you have that 10% risk of winds gusting to over hurricane force winds. Uh, and that includes, I mean, <laughs> same areas, Jackson, Vicksburg, Hattiesburg, down here to pretty much Baton Rouge, Alexandria. And I know I keep mentioning the same names, but you know, I just I just want to get the info out to you guys. You live in that black outline area embedded into the red area, that's a hatch risk of a significant of, of a risk of significant winds in this case. This is a big deal. And if you live in the yellow area, that is a 15% risk of winds exceeding 55 to 60 miles per hour. Okay. Now what about hell? Hell, you know. Just that 15% risk of hail exceeding one inch in diameter or larger. So we don't have a 30% risk of this, but I mean, that includes pretty much all the other areas I just mentioned. We do have a risk of some large hail. Really, if any supercells become dominant in nature, meaning they kind of become discreet and alone, that's when you'll probably run your highest tornado risk and your highest hail risk, large hail risk. So that's the latest per the Storm Prediction Center. This could tweak a little bit, broaden. Uh, but this is a big deal, guys. So let's go on and break down the latest HRRR model. And I'm going to try to talk about timelines and everything. Um, here is your time. Back this up an hour. So it says 7 a.m. This is around 6 a.m. Central Time. This is a uh, kind of a, a roundabout what's going on right now. But you continue to get this going quickly this morning. You're going to get widespread storms that develop very everywhere in nature, if that makes sense. I mean, they are just... Con Kind of just clustered up we're getting strong storms potentially up here in southern arkansas not sure if the instability is up there quite yet this morning but you continue to move forward and we take it to about lunchtime you got two things going on i'm going to show more mississippi and alabama here in a second we got storms cruising over the mississippi river we got storms over like the northern half of uh, louisiana and we got these strong to severe storms developing back here in eastern texas if you live in the eastern counties of texas these storms right here they're going to mean business going to have a tornado risk earlier in the day, like early in the afternoon, and they look kind of clustered together. <clears throat> but th this is the concerning thing is they're going to be, uh, have the potential to be very rain wrapped because the, the, the moisture, the convection is just really just congealed together. You're going to have a hard time getting a discrete supercell, kind of a, a storm all alone in this setup. And typically you do in the winter and spring in the fall. But you keep on going, and the theme here is by the time we get into about 4, 5, 6 o'clock, we're going to have this kind of line of storms with embedded kind of semi-supercells. Uh, supercells is a rotating thunderstorm, storm capable of producing all hazards, especially tornadoes. And what you see here is you see these kind of hook hooks you're seeing in this these cells of red and, and orange right here. That tells me, just based off this run of this model, that you're certainly going to have to be concerned for tornadoes. And it almost looks like they're kind of embedded into a line as they're cruising across Louisiana. This is 5, 6, 7 o'clock this evening. At this point, this line of storms, very dangerous. 
it's starting to move into western Mississippi. And the thing is, it's around 7 or 8 o'clock at this point, and it's nighttime. This is turning into a nocturnal threat very quickly because, you know, right now is some of your shortest days of the year. Okay, it's the end of December. That's your shortest days of the year. Um, but you keep this going, line of storms is going to cruise across southeast Louisiana late into the evening. And then they're going to move across the rest of Mississippi later this evening. But I do think Mississippi will have a shot of storms even early this afternoon. And then this moves in and it moves out. Now let's show the rest of the deep south with this. Okay, as we're moving forward here, same thing, starting it off around 9 or 10 o'clock this morning here in the next few hours. This first batch of rain will surge up the Mississippi Delta region. So we're getting a lot of heavy rain and storm activity all the way up to almost Memphis. And we got to watch out for these storms down here in southwest Mississippi kind of earlier in the period, like early this afternoon. We have some storms off the Gulf Coast line, too, in Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana. So here comes this first round. I don't know if this is going to do much. We're starting to get to about 5 or 6 o'clock central time, and we're getting some storms. Uh, these look well ventilated because we kind of have this sector of void of any rain or storms up into here. So I'd be careful with the kind of the bottom edge of these storms right here and sort of central to north central mississippi and then here comes the main show back here i do think southeast arkansas could run that risk of all hazards i mean you guys are in the severe weather threat for a reason and then the main line the main line of storms begins to surge in it doesn't show as much convection in this moist sector sector out ahead of the main line as it was showing like yesterday so i think this is why they've increased the severe weather threat because we're not having a lot of sloppy convection that's messing up with the instability out ahead of this line, line of storms. And I think that's why we've trended to more of a serious situation with this morning, into this morning. But this line of storms continues. It's around 7 or 8 o'clock. This line of storms will have embedded tornadoes with it. This is cruising through Jackson across the Mississippi River. This is starting to get close to like, uh, this has already moved through Vicksburg, starting to get close to Hattiesburg at this point. And this is like 9 o'clock at, at night this evening, guys. And, and this is going to be a line of storms capable of producing tornadoes and all hazards, damaging winds. A low-level jet will be ripping with this line of storms. All of these storms down here that are kind of separated from the line will have a shot to feed off the instability in this moist sector and produce tornadoes. And this continues. And we get all the way to Alabama. This is like in the middle of the night could have a nocturnal tornado threat. We will later tonight. This is like... This is like midnight, 1 a.m. in the morning. This line of storms will be cruising through Alabama. This is not this evening. This is tonight. And all these feeder storms moving in off the Gulf, off the Gulf here um, is going to have the capability of producing tornadoes. And this is eventually going to move all the way into Georgia, 5, 6 o'clock tomorrow morning, and probably be packing one heck of a punch. Um, damaging winds and still maybe an ongoing tornado threat. And then we have to watch tomorrow's severe weather threat, which I'll discuss um, in the other video I'm going to drop this morning. Um, we got to watch for a tornado threat and a severe weather threat tomorrow. I don't think it'll be anything comparable to, to today, but it still will pack a punch tomorrow across the Carolinas and areas of Georgia and Southern Virginia. What about the significant tornado parameter with this? Check out how it spikes. Now, the higher the number you see on your screen, the more ingredients there are in the atmosphere that support tornadoes. That doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get a tornado, but uh, the better ingredients are there. So you got fours, fives, and sevens off the significant tornado perimeter in these splotches of purple and white. And I mean, this is just three, four o'clock this afternoon. It spikes around the Houston area, starts to clear out in the rest of kind of northeast Texas. But this really spikes here in Louisiana this afternoon. And then it begins to spike around kind of along the Mississippi, southwest Mississippi, Louisiana state line and southeastern areas of uh, Louisiana closer to this evening. And then, of course, it spikes along the line and then it clears out. You can tell the ingredients get wiped away as the storms basically eat up all the ingredients in the atmosphere and then this moves away. But what about that updraft, a listy swath in this area? Um, guys, I mean, it's it's pretty alarming looking. Uh, anywhere where you see, really anywhere on this map, you can get a tornado today. But the, the latest long-range HRRR model picks up on the rotating thunderstorms and these slashes of color here, and it really just indicates that the atmosphere will be rotating today like crazy. 
Now you look at the significant tornado perimeter for the rest of the deep south. Here it comes. It spikes a little bit with this kind of afternoon convection south of it. And so we can get some ingredients that builds into those storms I mentioned for northern areas of Mississippi later this afternoon. And then it really spikes as this line begins to move through Mississippi later this evening. And by the time we get into 10, 11 o'clock tonight, significant tornado perimeter is its highest probably in western Alabama. Even the uh, southern Alabama area is the panhandle of Florida. And then it begins to lessen as we get into the less favorable time of the day, which is the morning for like Georgia. And it's the same thing. You know, you look at the updraft Felicity Swath shows the rotating thunderstorms in the atmosphere. You can see how it's its highest in Louisiana, Mississippi, then begins to drop off a little bit once it gets into Alabama. So if we're speaking ingredients, I'm not going to spend super long on this, but you always compare thermodynamics with kinematics. So wherever they overlap the best, that's where you're going to have the highest severe weather threat. So that happens in Louisiana, and Mississippi, and sections of surrounding states. And these are dew points. When you get your dew points, it, it, those humid levels like dew points in the 60s, low 70s, you know you have a ripe, moist environment, thermodynamic environment for severe weather. And sure enough, you get earlier in the sa early into this afternoon, we get dew points that climb into the low 70s in Louisiana and then even spike to the upper 60s, maybe low 70s into Mississippi. And you can see how the cold front kind of pushes through the cold pool of air behind these storms. And look at the humid, moist air, this moist sector spiking all the way up into the southern, southwestern counties in Mississippi. So you got plenty of moist air building ahead of this line, and it'll do it again tomorrow where dew points will spike into the 60s all the way up into the Carolinas. And you compare that with your CAPE values in response to your higher uh, dew points. And uh, listen, I mean, if you in, in an event like this in the winter, when you get CAPE values spiking over 2,000 joules per kilogram mixed layer CAPE, that's not good. Even a thousand, heck, even 800 to a thousand joules per kilogram in storm energy and storm fuel cape uh, would get the job done in this situation. But you're getting cape levels that are going to spike to over 2,000 joules per kilogram. And uh, of course, your, your storm fuel lessens a little bit. It's just not as much to tap into once it gets into Mississippi. But I'm telling you that that a thousand is, is plenty in this case. And uh, this continues and then you kind of lose it. But it hangs around all night down here along the Gulf Coast line. This is why I do think we'll continue to have a tornado threat along the Gulf Coast line into the overnight hours. And then the last thing you'll look at is kinematics, the, the winds in all levels of the atmosphere. Your low-level jet will begin to run rampant uh, this morning. And by the time we're starting to get into this afternoon in eastern Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, we get, we're getting a low-level jet pushing 40 to 50, even 55 to 60 knots in some areas. This is fueling. Plenty of wind energy in the atmosphere that supports damaging winds, tornadoes, and uh, you overlap all this that you're seeing here with your higher cape levels. And what do you get? You get the overlapping ingredients to support a severe weather outbreak, which is unfortunately what we're going to end up with today. Now, there is definitely a fail mode with this, just like there is with any severe weather threat. And we hope that it materializes. And hopefully we just get a lot of convection out ahead of the main line that kind of eats up the ingredients in the atmosphere but guys stay safe in the deep south today you guys know and if hopefully lived here long enough to know to take these threats serious they come up on you fast and just kind of relate this to a classic early springtime late winter kind of setup because that's how it's going to be today god bless all y'all stay safe praying for y'all folks and i'll have you another update tonight